James Lannis, uh, I'm from Autodesk, and we will be talking about what it is Autodesk actually has to do with software as a service. Can you guys hear me? This thing's kind of short. Yes, no, don't care? All right, good. <laughs> All right, so before we dig into this talk about software as a service, we got to make sure we get our buzzwords out of the way. Um, there's been a lot of names for this whole concept over the years. Um, probably heard of ASP being one of those, you know, back in the days when ISP was one of the big words that we like to kick around. Um, people kind of co-opted that and say, oh, we're not just going to provide internet, we're going to provide applications. Uh, so you had companies that were jumping on this bandwagon calling themselves ASPs. You know, a lot of the CRM apps um, in, the, in the old days uh, were doing that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, basically companies providing software on the internet, you know, that's, that's the main theme here. Uh, we had companies calling their software on demand, and this is something that Autodesk has done. Uh, we've been kind of guilty of that. We take, oh, well, we've got this product that you're supposed to install on your server. Well, let's just host that, and we'll call it on demand. You know, it's, it's the same exact thing. You know, this whole Web 2.0 concept, I don't know if anyone even really knows what that means at this point. Um, but I, I think that kind of has to do with software as a service. Uh, I don't know. Um, but I, I think the best way to, to really talk about software as a service and understand what it means is just give some examples. So Salesforce, I think, is kind of the quintessential example that everybody knows, and I think pretty much everybody uses it at this point. They've kind of submarined themselves into pretty much every company doing pretty much everything that there is that's out there. But they don't sell you their software. They sell you a service, right? You don't buy a copy of Salesforce. You buy a license for users to log into Salesforce, right? So they're hosting your data. They're granting you access to their applications. That's the idea behind software as a service. Now, where it really starts getting interesting is when everybody else starts jumping on this bandwagon, right? So how many of you have seen Photoshop Express? Okay, a few of you. Basic concept is everyone's aware of Photoshop, you know, one of the most heavily pirated pieces of software out there, right? <laughs> so th how does Adobe solve that problem? You know, maybe, maybe this whole idea of software as a service is gonna help us out, right? But th this idea of Photoshop Express, you go to a website and you're using Photoshop. You're not, you know, downloading your crack. You're not, you know, paying your $5,000. You're going to a website and using Photoshop features to edit your photos. Look at Google. I mean, they're kind of, you know, quintessential example of submarining. You know, you talk about software as a service. Almost everything that they're doing now is an example of software as a service. You know, all of us have Gmail accounts at this point. That is software as a service. It's breaking the traditional email model where, oh, webmail, that's, that's an application service provider. Well, really, it's just, you know, webmail software as a service. But then you, you move on to the other stuff that's just tabs right now in your Gmail client or, you know, somewhere in your iGoogle interface. Google Docs, it's Word for the web. It's Word as a service. Um, Google Spreadsheets, Excel as a service, right? Um, who knows what else Google's gonna do, you know? Their goal, obviously, is total information awareness. So, you know, what is the next thing that Google is going to tune into service? I have no idea. <laughs> so where does Autodesk fit into this whole picture? You know, you think of Autodesk, and maybe you don't even know what we do. Or maybe you think of AutoCAD. What does that have to do with a service, or Maya, or any of these, these sort of box products? You know, traditionally, there's no security model for a box product, right? What, is it, what does it mean? to make security on a, a desktop app that you're going to install. You know, you don't want someone to pirate it. Uh, what else do you really care about? Not a whole lot, right? Um, so when you, when you think about Autodesk, you don't normally think about these kind of things. But uh, the reason I joined Autodesk, and this was about uh, a year ago at this point, was that they're, they're totally bought into this whole idea of software as a service. And the group that I'm working in now, we're already operating SaaS applications. They're not a huge part of our business. Most of you would never hear of them because, you know, how many people in here are in the construction industry? Nobody, right? You know, construction industry, we're still working on slide rules most of the time. It's very hard to convince people to use technology. Um, so the reality is, you know, th when we're making this transition, it's, it's not something you normally think of Autodesk as doing, but uh, there's a whole lot of cool products that we've got going on, and you know, this isn't a sales pitch because I don't think anyone here is in the position to buy Autodesk stuff anyway. But um, you know, we're, we're doing things like 
making grid computing environments to, to do uh, rendering in 3D in real time so you can walk through somebody's building. You know, we're looking at doing the same thing that Adobe is doing. And you know, we have this kind of, we're not me tooing Adobe uh, kind of mentality at, at Autodesk sometimes, which is kind of weird that we see them as a competitor. Um, but in the technology space, there's a lot of things where we overlap. You know, we own Maya, which is a 3D rendering uh, <coughs> software. All those kind of things, we're thinking about turning those into a service. And one of the prime motivations there, again, is this idea of piracy, where what, what is one of our biggest challenges? Well, somebody can just take AutoCAD and pirate it to their heart's content. But when you, when you think about putting AutoCAD on the web, how are you going to pirate that? You know, we'll talk about some of the advantages to that, that whole process. But this idea of a grid computing, you know, 3D rendering modeling system, you know, taking your, auto, your AutoCAD drawings and then all the other businesses that Autodesk has acquired doing things like um, this company called Green Building Studio, which what it what allows you to do is take a Revit drawing, plug it into this, this basically web service, and what it does is spit back your, your green kind of um, profile. So we got in kind of trouble because we were measuring the green profile of a building in Hummer H3s. That was our unit of, like, greenness. <laughs> so you, you'd, you'd upload your, your drawing, and you'd get back a measurement of how much carbon your building was using in terms of Hummer H3. So we had to kind of change our unit. But uh, all these kind of these cool ideas where you're taking all these different services that are built around the idea of a building drawing or a building plan or a, you know, a 3D model. Um, welding all those web services together, suddenly you're blurring the line between, all right, well, I've got Revit, but I've got a plugin that talks to a web service. Is that software as a service now? I don't know. What happens if I take all the other functionality in Revit and put that on the web? So that's kind of where we're at right now. We're in this idea of let's do this and how is that going to work? Um, so that's why I'm excited to be involved in that whole process. And that's why I'm going to be talking about why software as a service matters. So hopefully that answers your question about what's Autodesk doing here. <laughs> so. Um, to kind of put this whole thing into perspective, when I was building this presentation, uh, I came to a realization that I could probably sum everything up in about 30 seconds. You know, I could have walked in and said, software as a service is nothing new. Whatever you're doing to secure your apps before, you've got to do the same thing, right? And then I could just walk off. Um, but you know, I wanted to make sure you guys get your money's worth. So um, giving a little background of what that actually means and why this stuff isn't new, uh, using a quote here from the dudes at Sun, and if you look at this kind of at the surface, do you think they were, were, were trying to sell Sun boxes this way? Not really, I mean, they weren't, they weren't making network hardware. Um, but the idea that information or processing exists in the grid, it doesn't exist on the client, um, that's something we kind of had to learn the hard way. So there's this whole pendulum swing that he's talking about where we had a mainframe infrastructure where we had very dumb clients we moved into, what happens if we put everything on the client? You know, we've got all this general purpose hardware. What, why not use it? And then we realized all the reasons why that should be the case. And now we're kind of swinging back. So over this period of 30 years, and I figured I'd you know, just do a quick back of the envelope calculation and see what kind of pendulum we were talking about here. Um, works out to be about 900 light years. So you know, size doesn't matter, obviously. But um, it doesn't really make sense either because we're talking about you know, Earth gravity, and you can't really fit a pendulum that size in there. But anyway, um, yeah. <laughs>